Happy anniversary, Reverend Barber. We're celebrating 25 years of your pastoral ministry at Greenleaf Christian Church. We are so grateful to have you uh, on this planet at this time, at such a critical hour. The Creator knew that we needed you now. On behalf of my father, Dick Gregory, who loved you. On behalf of my mother, Lillian, who simply adores you. And on behalf of all of our family, the entire Gregory family, we salute you. You have been on the front line, brother, uh, not just fighting to save souls on the spiritual plane, but you've been fighting on the front line uh, for freedom and justice for all of humanity. And for that, we are eternally grateful. You are simply irreplaceable. And God knew that we needed you now. You are a powerful, powerful human being, and uh, we're just grateful to have you. Black man with the keys in your hands, oh, you opened up the way for a new day. Love you, King. Salute you. Mwah. All right, big shout out to my brother in Christ, my brother in Alpha, Reverend Dr. William Barber on your 25th anniversary. I'm sure there's a major celebration going on there uh, in North Carolina. Of course, uh, you have been on the front lines holding America accountable. As Dr. King said, to be the nation it is on paper and there to redeem the soul of America. And so that's how uh, Christians are supposed to do it, how Alphas are supposed to do it. Uh, and of course, I know it's always difficult when you're a pastor of a church and folks want you to be there and be present all the time, but uh, you have been making a tremendous sacrifice traveling around this country, uh, speaking to the issues of the poor, the disenfranchised, and America needs your leadership. And so uh, we thank you for all that you've done, and, and there are tremendous uh, things that you've done thus far, but God has other things planned for you as well. And so we appreciate all that you have done. And so uh, I'm sure uh, y'all going to have a great time there don't eat too much uh, of that peach cobbler uh, and that fried chicken uh, but uh, be sure to uh, have a piece of pound cake for a brother uh, I shall see you on the front lines I got to go to the Jeffrey Osborne Golf Classic then I'll be at NABJ for our national convention in Detroit uh, representing the black journalists and so you know I stand with you at all times stay well stay black and keep putting the pressure to make this country the nation it's supposed to be deuces I send this message of encouragement and congratulations to Reverend Dr. William Barber and to Greenleaf Christian Church for your 25 years of being a pastor at this amazing grassroots movement church in Goldsboro, North Carolina. It's been an honor to, to serve with you as the co-chair of Red Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival. Your witness, your prophetic vision, um, and your interpretation of what Christians are called to do in times such as these is an inspiration for me and my family, for those that are building this Poor People's Campaign together and for this entire nation. I wish I could be with you all today um, to celebrate uh, 25 years, but I send this note of love and encouragement and uh, look forward to being with you all together soon. Be well. Doctor, happy 25th anniversary. Thank you for picking up the baton from Dr. King by reintroducing this generation to exactly what nonviolent creative civil disobedience is all about through Moral Monday, and also by renewing his last campaign, the Poor People's Campaign. Happy anniversary to your wife, Mrs. Barber, to your entire family, because we know a 25-year pastorate is also a ministry for the family as well. Thank you, family, for sharing Dr. Barber with all of us. And also, thank you, Greenleaf, for sharing Dr. Barber with the world. We know that's no small thing. Most congregations want to keep the preacher all to themselves, but you've been unselfish in that regard. I love you all. I always enjoy when I'm there at Greenleaf. Where else can you talk about having a glass of Manischewitz? We would share some magic. What do you call that stuff? Manischewitz. Why y'all tripping? I sure did every year. Where else can you talk about Parliament Funkadelic? Flags like oh. everybody's got a little light under the sun and green leaf, especially do you with our brother, the Reverend Dr. William J. Barber. Happy 25th anniversary. 
Hello, this is Terry Hord Owens, General Minister and President of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in the U.S. and Canada. And I'm here to send a warm word of congratulations to the Reverend Dr. Bishop William J. Barber II on your 25th pastoral anniversary at Greenleaf Christian Church. Most of the world has seen you on the public stage as you've led in the fight for justice and the fight against poverty, working with Moral Mondays in North Carolina, the repairs of the breach, and most recently, the very powerful Poor People's Campaign. Disciples of Christ across the country were proud to stand with you in your public work. But I'm not sure that most people are really aware that at the same time you were also serving as the moderator of the North Carolina region, that your pastoral presence with Greenleaf Christian Church has lasted 25 years. I've seen you, I've talked with you as the moderator of the North Carolina region. And a few weeks ago, I was honored to stand in the pulpit where you pastor, and I saw you as the shepherd of the flock that God has given you. I want you to know that disciples across this country are so proud to call you one of our own. We are so grateful for the gifts of God within you. We want you to be encouraged as you encourage so many of us. And we're so grateful for all that you do for the cause of Christ. Congratulations, Bishop Barber. And Greenleaf Christian Church, let's be sure that you honor and love the man of God who has been sent to lead you and pastor and shepherd your congregation. God bless you, Bishop Barber. Much love, much heart. Amen. This is a choice for us that is a moral choice. And that's why I'm so honored to be here today. I want to introduce the Reverend Barber, who has made fighting for those who have less, fighting for these the least of thy brethren, the heart of his ministry. He has been shocking the conscience of our nation with the Poor People's Campaign. He's now held rallies in more than 30 states. Uh, Reverend Barbara has decided to pick up where Dr. King left off when he was assassinated. And that is to remind our country about its moral values and also to remind the American people that in the richest country in the history of the world, 40 million people should not be living in poverty. 30 million people should ha not be having no health care. One out of five Americans should not be in a position where they can't afford prescription drugs. Young people should not be in a position where they can't afford to go to college solely because of their lack of income. So I want to thank Reverend Barber for his moral expositions and for standing with the most vulnerable people in this country. He is a pastor, he is a bishop, he is a civil rights champion, and he is someone I am proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with in the fight for an America that lives up to its values. Reverend Barber, you're the one up. Here you go. So are you. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water. We shall not be moved. Though the decades march on, the dream lives. We are here assembled for hope. Courage and commitment continued by torchbearers like Reverend Dr. William Barber II, pastor of Greenleaf Christian Church in Goldsboro. Greenleaf has taught me what church is and what church is supposed to be. It is a prophetic ministry meant by Jesus Christ to help all people. I was raised in this church. It's one of the most welcoming, loving, caring, and compassionate churches that I've ever been a part of. This church has grown throughout the years, has always served the public, always done great things for the community. I love being a part of a place that's doing something beyond the walls. For the people in our community. We are not an 
in the Four Walls Church. We are in the community church. No matter what race, creed, color, it's a loving church. And no matter how much trouble you're in, they are here to help you. Because when you go to a church and the church only cares about your soul, that's called Gnosticism. It's an ancient heretical form of Christian faith that says you don't matter, just your soul, what's inside you. And that's the same hypocritical faith that was taught by the slave masters to the slave. We want to baptize you so your soul will go to heaven. But you can't use your baptism to get your hind parts out of slavery. And I don't know that Jesus. He stands by his convictions, even with the threat of getting arrested. The Moral Monday events demonstrate a classic David versus Goliath struggle. The Reverend taking on a right-leaning state legislature that has introduced an avalanche of extreme policies that hurt students, the poor, and the sick. You try to turn us backwards rather than go forward. We do us. We fight, we fight, we fight. Forward together, not one step back. This is the most multicultural, multiracial, multi-ethnic gathering in the South. We are black, we are white, we are Latino, we are Native American, we are Democrat, we are Republican, we are independent, we are people of faith, we are people not of faith, we are natives and immigrants, we are business leaders and workers and unemployed, we are doctors and the uninsured, we are gay, we are straight, we are students, we are parents, we are retirees, we are North Carolina, we are America, and we are here, and we ain't going nowhere. They stood then, they stood then, we stand now, we stand now, we stand now. We want to go, want to go, legislate evil. It is my great honor, and I must say, it is my honor to have this opportunity to present to you the Martin Luther King Jr. Award for your service, for your leadership, for never giving up for never giving in, for keeping the faith, and for keeping your eyes on the prize. Thank you. Finally, when 50 years after Selma, after Bloody Sunday, after the sacrifices of death and tears, we find ourselves having to declare that North Carolina is ourselves. When we see an all-out attempt to abridge and deny the right to vote, we are being called like our foremothers and fathers to be the moral defibrillators of our time. The greatest sin in the Bible is the sin of idolatry, worshiping things, worshiping money, worshiping power. The second greatest sin that flows out of the sin of idolatry and exists wherever people worship themselves and say, I and I alone can fix things, is the injustices toward the least of these. Proverbs 31 says, lift your voice on behalf of those who are broken. Luke 4 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to the poor. We've come to use our moral and prophetic position to raise and expose the kind of hell that poor people and disabled people and older people will go through if this kind of unjust law is passed. We have to deal with our war economy and systemic racism and systemic poverty and ecological devastation. And finally, we have to deal with the moral narrative. This wall, this is sin of the highest order. We are traveling around this country building this Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival. In that text, Jesus lays out a clear public policy agenda. The poor, the imprisoned, the brokenhearted, the bruised, the blind, the oppressed, that's where the movement must focus. If it's led by the spirit of the universe, and we are here 
and it's time for us to be the remnant that can transform the nation. Restore, Restore. the Voting Rights Act. Voting rights Act. Now. now, there will be a movement that will break through the con and cut through the lies and bring people together to save the heart and the soul of this democracy and this world. And it's what we have allowed is extremists to make abortion, prayer in the school, and human sexuality the force of a moral discourse, which is counter to the Bible that many of them put their hands on. In fact, I brought this, Senator Warren, hoping that maybe you'll get them to replace all the Bibles in this place with the poverty and justice Bible that has every scripture, all 2,000, that talk about the poor and the stranger and the sick and what we ought to be doing. Since there are some people that love to bring up the Bible, we want to hope that they read it and really know what's in it. <clears throat> Our brothers and sisters are sleeping on the streets. For a country this rich to have so many people poor, it's immoral and it's wrong. Our backs are against the wall and we got no choice but to push. We'll follow that breaking news in Albany where a large group of protesters have moved into the street. Washington Avenue between City Hall and Lark Street closed down. Protesters with the Poor People's Campaign of Indiana. Two o'clock on the east close, two o'clock in the middle, two o'clock on the west close. A wave and the historians tell us it's never happened before. When we join hands, we can revive and make sure that the promise of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and equal protection under the law and care for the common good will never be taken away or forfeited for anybody, anytime, anywhere. So together, the rejected will revive the promise that this land is your land and this land is my land. Together, we have to make sure that hope, not hate, has the last word in the state house, in the White House, and even at the ballot box. Together, we have to ensure that all of God's children are respected and treated with dignity. Together, the rejected will redeem the heart of society, and yes, even the world. Jesus' message of good news to the poor is an announcement for all of us. The rejected must leave. The soul of the nation is at stake. The soul of the nation cannot be saved, cannot be sturdy, cannot be properly put together unless the rejected lead the revival and become the chief cornerstone. There is no way to mend the flaws of the nation and be one nation under God with liberty and justice for all unless the rejected are at the center. We can't find our way out of the mess we're in with a left focus or a right focus. We've got to refocus on those who have been rejected. When we all those hands get together, the rejected can come together and they become an instrument of redemption and reconstruction. All the stones that the builders rejected have got to become the capstone. Oh,